Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard Gaming. And I've got a new episode of Utterly Pointless Comparisons for you today. I'll be taking a look at the arcade and PC Engine CD versions of Gradius 2. As usual, here's a look at the specs of both the arcade and home hardware we'll be looking at today, while I tell you just a smidge about the game itself. Konami released Arcade Gradius 2 in 1988. It was a follow-up to the hugely successful Gradius, and, for many, they consider this the pinnacle of the series. This is a great game that balances difficulty and fun in a good way that you can actually enjoy. It sort of rehashes some of the levels in the first Gradius, but puts new twists on them. So you see a lot of things that are familiar, but it also has a lot of new things, like the new weapon edit system. We have many more bosses, they're all unique in this one, versus seeing basically the same one over and over again as we did in the first game. So again, this one's really good, highly recommended if you've never played it. In 1992, Konami released a version of Gradius 2 for the PC Engine Super CD. Now the Super CD version of Gradius 2 is... also great! A lot of people said it was arcade perfect, but it's really not. <laughs> but that's alright, it doesn't have to be. I will tell you that this is the best contemporary home port of any Gradius arcade game to a home console before the year 2000. I like this version a lot, they did a great job on it, and considering the limitations of the system, they found some creative ways to overcome them in a lot of cases. Sometimes, they couldn't. But for the most part, this is a fantastic game, and I have mostly positive things to say about it. But still, there's enough differences that this video is worthwhile, where I can point them out and crush your dreams of being able to say that this game was arcade perfect on PC Engine. Alright, recording methodology for this one. I did use save states in both versions, so I could help sync up the gameplay as closely as possible. I actually left the load times in for the PC Engine version this time, because they're not all that bad, and I just wanted you to see what they were like. Usually I take them out, but they're pretty short, so I kept them in there. Sometimes they actually let the arcade version uh, catch up in places where it was a little behind, so it worked out great most of the time. Alright then, let's get on with it! Alright, and we are underway on Gradius 2. Yeah, the select screen for the weapons is pretty similar. And as we get going, there's a little bit of a gap between when you select your weapon and when the actual game starts on the PC Engine CD version, but not too much. Now, right off the bat, we can notice a few things. First, there's a lot more stars in the arcade version, and everything is a lot thinner, and the playfield is larger in the arcade version. Power-up meter is also lower down at the very bottom of the screen in the arcade, versus up quite a noticeable bit in the PC Engine port. Now, having said that, I mean, this is still a, a great-looking port of Gradius 2. Uh, so I don't want to take anything away from it. It has a lot of people saying that it's about perfect, and as you can see here, it's definitely not perfect, even though it's really good. And as I said before, and I will repeat here, even though it's not perfect, this was by far the best console port of any Gradius arcade game, probably until after the year 2000. <laughs> that includes the Super Nintendo port of Gradius 3, which is very different from the arcade version, and in some ways better, but in some ways... I mean, well, let's not beat that dead horse here. Everyone knows about the slowdown in the normal commercial release of that game. So as we continue on through here, one of the biggest differences, again, is just how much wider everything is in the PC Engine version because of the lower resolution it's running at. And because of that, it makes the play field a little smaller, which is really going to come into play later. And we can also tell that it's not showing quite as many colors, and the colors are a little bit different on here. Uh, nothing to really complain about. I mean, still, again, super well done. Uh, but definitely noticeable differences are here. And one other thing, a lot of people think the arcade soundtrack was just thrown directly onto the CD for this game, and that is definitely not the case, as you can hear. It's extremely similar, but they cleaned it up, especially the percussion, and some of the instruments sound a little fuller in some ways in the CD version. 
One thing I'm not super thrilled about, and I've complained about this in a lot of other uh, PC Engine CD ports that I've shown, in this era, a lot of the developers lean super into the treble end of the audio spectrum, which makes things sound a little tinnier than they should. As we go on to level 2 here at the opening, once again you can see there's way more stars in the uh, arcade version versus the PC Engine port. Again, if you look even at like little power-up tokens, you can tell how much wider they are on PC Engine, again, because of the lower horizontal resolution. Now you're probably looking at this and thinking, oh great, another PC Engine port with no kind of parallax, but then this happens. So, the colors are very different uh, between the two versions of the game here, but this looks great on PC Engine. And they're kind of cheating and doing faux parallax, really using background tiles again, but this is a great implementation of it. And one of the dead giveaways is if you look at some of the landscape in the PC Engine CD port, there are some thick black outlines around it, which means they were kind of squaring off some of these tiles. And also the stuff you shoot through is a lot thicker on PC Engine. Now here comes a pretty big noticeable difference. Look at all the slowdown on the PC Engine CD port and some of the flicker we see here. None of that is present really in this area in the arcade version. There's a couple of points where, you know, there's maybe just a tiny little bit of slowdown in this section in the arcade, but it is nothing like what we experience on PC Engine CD. I mean, I had to pause the arcade game in order to let it catch up here. And I had to pause the arcade game in order to let the PC Engine CD version catch up here. And then once it does, once we're out of that area, uh, things are basically okay again. And you can really see if you look at the landscape and the construction of everything, again, just how wider all the images are on the PC Engine CD port. You don't notice it so much when you're playing the games separately, uh, but it's really apparent when you put them right next to each other. Another thing I'll point out here is the PC Engine version does have um, pretty much all the speech from the arcade game, but it is nowhere near as clear. And the speech isn't super clear on the arcade game to begin with, but it's a little rougher in the PC ECD port. Now there's another level in the books. I left the loading time in for the PC Engine here, just so you could see what it was like. Usually I cut that stuff out, but in this case, I want to show you it's not even that bad. Uh, it's really just a second or two, you know, after you finish a level. And once more, as we go into the third level, the star field is way more complex in the arcade original. We've got like four layers of stars in the arcade original, versus pretty much just two layers of stars on the PC Engine. Now what I will say I prefer on the PC Engine port here is I like the color better. The arcade, you know, it's sort of desaturated a little bit, while on PC ECD we have a nice bright blue that's in there. And while the crystals move in a similar way, including with the weird low frame rate in both versions of the game, I think they move a little bit smoother in the PC ECD port. So I'm not going to complain about that either. Like I said, don't take me pointing out differences in these two games and saying this is a bad port. It's not. It's fantastic. But it's still worth seeing what they had to change versus what they were able to keep. Now, especially on this part here, there's a little bit of randomness to it. Uh, so what we see, in, you know, as far as the big chunks of crystal on the PCE port versus arcade, they don't show up in the exact same places uh, at the exact same times. They're different in both versions a little bit each time you get here. 
which makes this part super fun, because sometimes you get into basically a no-win situation where things just don't go your way because of the movement of the crystals. And I will mention also that there's a pretty interesting Famicom port of this game that sadly we never got in the West. And it's probably Konami's best, most complex shooter on the system, so it's kind of too bad we didn't get it. Maybe I'll find an excuse to show that one another time. And what's funny is, after I had to pause the PC Engine version, I mean, I paused the arcade version in the last level to let the PC Engine version catch up, now I have to do the reverse! Not because the arcade had a significant amount of slowdown or anything, the level's just a tinge faster on PC Engine. Which, that's another thing I didn't really point out, probably because of the, you know, wider graphics, the scrolling on PCE is a, just a little bit faster than its arcade counterpart. And you'll see some of that manifest a little bit later on here. And here is our stage boss. Very similar in both versions. But again, this is one of those areas where having less space to move around in the uh, PCE CD port makes it a little bit tougher uh, in some ways than the arcade version. Alright, here we head into stage four, and this is going to be our sort of typical Gradius forest land hill level. Sort of like the first level in the first game, sort of an updated version of it. We'd also see a stage like this one in Gradius 3. Once again, we can see the star field is more complex than the arcade one, no surprise there. Here we go. So in this one, I think they haven't done quite as good a job at porting the graphics over to the home port. Uh, they're a little less detailed, and there's definitely less color in them than I would have expected here. Now, it doesn't look bad, it just looks like it should look better, is <laughs> basically the most I can say about it. In this one, it looks almost, I dare say, NES-like. And the PC Engine, as we know, is capable of showing a lot of colors on screen, but for various reasons, very often, we will see that if you look at, you know, color counts in a lot of games, that they're usually somewhere between the 40s and the 60s. So right around Genesis territory. Again, we can see they've stuck very close to the arcade layout here. And pretty much every enemy shows up in the exact spot where it's supposed to. They fire at basically the exact rates. And in other words, this is just the sort of thing you want to see in a home port of an arcade game. So kudos to Konami on this one, they've done a really good job bringing this game home to the PC Engine. Now here is one of the more annoying bosses. I always hated this stupid thing. I didn't mean to get here with double, I would vastly have preferred to use the laser at this point, but it wasn't meant to be. Especially since I took a few hits and had to re-enable my shield. So, you can just stuff the options on it and blast away. Uh, I didn't quite do that in the arcade version until the second half of the fight. I don't know why I waited, but here we are. You can see the little hamster wheel in my brain that started turning right around that point. And now we are getting ready to head into stage five. Stage 5 is going to be everyone's favorite, I think. The Mawai Head stage. Everyone loves that stage in Gradius, right? Now, it's not quite as annoying in Gradius 2 as it is in Gradius 3. 
where the Mawai Head stage is kind of a nightmare. But pretty much every stage in Arcade Gradius 3 is kind of a nightmare. If you've only played the NES, I mean the, the Super Nintendo version, the SNES port of Gradius 3, well, you haven't experienced that game in its full glory. The arcade version is, notably, one of the hardest games that I've ever played, and I would say has a reputation for being one of the hardest games ever made. So here in Gradius 2, in this Mawai Head stage, once again, they've done a pretty decent job, but oddly enough, uh, we see the reverse of what we often see in arcade ports to home systems. In this case, the arcade version has better contrast than the console port. I don't know why they decided to make it a little more wishy-washy on the PC Engine. Now we can also see that there's a ton of the rings on the screen that are shot out from the Y heads, and the way they show a lot of them on screen at once on the PC Engine is to flicker the sprites on and off every other frame uh, so they're not drawing them all at once, which would cause a whole lot of slowdown and a whole lot of sprite flicker. And if you pause this, you know, rapidly you'll see about half the rings disappear. I think they're doing it every other frame, but it may even be, you know, every two or three frames. But still, it comes off pretty well. And, uh, while there's a little bit of slowdown on PC Engine on this level, it's not too bad. It actually works pretty well to help keep these games apace, since otherwise the PC Engine version scrolls ever so slightly faster, again, probably because of that smaller and wider resolution. Wider meaning the pixels are a little bit wider. Now here comes an area where the smaller play area on the PC Engine version really starts to affect things, and you'll see what I mean here. So the enemies are all wider on PC ECD, so they take up more space and you have less room to maneuver on the screen. Because of that, you can see it was very easy for that uh, one to get behind me here. But once I get on the other side of them again, they're no problem. Now there's really two or three instances where the extra wideness of things really hurts the PC Engine port. And it's especially uh, going to be obvious in the last level with one boss in particular. Which I don't want to spoil it, but just wait till I get there. You're going to see something pretty special. And man, look how much wider these big Y heads are for the boss fight on PC Engine. And this boss fight works out pretty much identically on both versions. You'll see I make it through one a little faster than the other for what will be pretty obvious reasons. As you can see I've already enabled the laser in the PC Engine port, and I had it active in the arcade version. I can't remember why I didn't enable it. I should have. I do eventually. <laughs> there you go. And if you didn't notice, on PC Engine when you fire the laser out, the laser beam flashes just like the uh, rings were flashing in that level. So it's not drawing the lines for the laser every frame. So now, you'll notice I've zoomed in, because they've added a level to the PC Engine port that is not in the arcade original, and that is this level here. So much like the PC Engine port of the first Gradius game added a level like in the desert with bones and stuff, well, guess what? They did the same thing here. It's not the same as that one, it's different, uh, but in a lot of ways it's going to be similar and it'll remind you of that one. So for our little opening section here at the beginning of the level, it's pretty standard. And then here we go into the level proper. I decided to load it up with annoying little traps, like these columns that break as soon as you get close enough to them. You're going to pay close attention to where they are. It's very easy to get hit by them if you don't. Now you do have a split-second warning, as you'll see them start to crack uh, before they shoot either up or down. 
So you've got a little bit of time to get out of the way if you, you know, accidentally trigger one. And I would say, unlike a lot of arcade ports that throw in extra levels, this one actually works pretty well. It doesn't feel like it's completely out of place. I mean, not too long ago I showed you the PC Engine Super, I mean, arcade card uh, port of Strider. And that one, the extra level they threw in, was garbage. <laughs> this one, it actually feels like it fits with the game. Now this one was done by Konami, of course, and they've done an excellent job. So not a whole lot more to say here, we're almost at the end. It's a little bit shorter than some of the other levels, but not by a huge amount. And again, we see them using some tricks like flickering some of the projectiles that are fired by enemies so they don't have to draw them every frame. And if you've played later Gradius games that came out after this one, you'll probably recognize some aspects of this boss. And this one is a little bit easier than the version we'll see in later games that's sort of an upgrade. Uh, so if you get here and you have your lasers and your options, you're probably going to do fine. Alright, so we'll shrink this back on down right after the loading is done. And then we will bring back the arcade port and here we go side by side again. This time around, we've just got a single Starfield layer in both versions. And this is sort of the introduction of what will become another staple in almost all Gradius games going forward. The super speed level where you go really fast. And you're going to probably be wondering if there's no parallax again on here, what, no background at all, but then there it is. Now the background is much simpler than the arcade one, but it's still there and it still looks good and I appreciate that we see some parallax. Now I had to pause the arcade version because the PC Engine one doesn't start as fast right away. It starts out slower and then gains a little momentum to get up to speed. Once it does, they're roughly the same speed though. And yeah, the simple tile patterns in the background look alright on that version. I wish they'd had a little more detail. Uh, I don't know why they couldn't have had a little more detail. But there you are. We do have a little bit of flicker here and there, as you can see on PC Engine in this area with the lasers also. And now we are up to our boss fight. Gradius Vets will also recognize this one. This boss has appeared in quite a few Gradius games. This is probably the easiest version of all of them, uh, but that's alright. I would say that overall, while Gradius 2 can get pretty tough, especially in the later levels, unlike some of the later games in the series, and 3 in particular, this one is much more accessible and you actually have a chance if you work hard and try to get the most of the enemy patterns down. This part is kind of annoying little thing from Gradius 1 before we go through our boss rush mode, which was also sort of introduced in this one. We didn't have a boss rush in the prior Gradius game, because it basically only had like one or two bosses in it. So there were not enough to even constitute a rush. And you can see also the stupid option eater enemy is not quite in sync in both versions. It's coming out at slightly different times in the two of them. Yeah, and I'll just pause one while I finish off the boss. Then we'll wait and we'll uh, go back into it in both once the doors open, like that. And check out how much wider the brain enemy looks here on PC Engine versus the arcade game. That's a pretty big difference. Shoot it in the eye. And it's probably the same graphic, just ported directly over to the PCE. Oh, so they didn't have to redraw it. 
And once again, it just looks that way because of the differences in screen resolution between the arcade version and the PC Engine CD version. Now that is one on um, PC Engine definitely takes fewer shots to knock out. And so he went down pretty quick. It's not going to be too bad here on the arcade version, we've almost got him. There you go. That boss was of course first seen in Life Force, much as this boss was first seen in Life Force. Or if you want to be a stickler, you could say Salamander. Because technically they look like the Salamander versions, not the Life Force versions, which are a little bit different, at least in the arcade. Now we do have a lot of extra slowdown and flicker on PC Engine for this boss that is not present in the arcade. There is some slowdown in the arcade original, as you can see there, uh, but it is not anywhere near the same degree. Once again, they've used their sort of sprite flickering trick, not drawing them every frame, to help get more sprites on screen for all the arms on this thing. Which I remember this boss's name, his name's Intruder. This boss is of course from Salamander slash Life Force, in both the NES and arcade versions, he shows up at the end of the second level, even though the second level is incredibly different in both of those games. In Arcade Salamander, it was a star field. In NES Life Force, they took the Salamander level 4 and put it in level 2. But Intruder is the boss of level 2, no matter which version of the game you play. Yeah, it goes on for a while, sorry about that. Here's another boss that we would see in the arcade version of Life Force. Slightly modified in this version. And we'll have two forms here. Not a ton to say other than really the only big visual differences aside from the aspect ratio are the amount of stars in the background. We have another Life Force boss, or Salamander boss, this is Cruiser Tetron, but they threw in a little twist. So after you destroy the big dragon, he breaks into three little dragons. Look at them, aren't they cute? Don't you just love their little scream? Look at all the flicker, by the way, on the PC Engine port. There is a ton of flicker on this one for this boss that is not present in the arcade original. Still, it's not terrible, and it didn't really interfere with the actual gameplay too much. Still very noticeable. And here's the actual boss of the level. And this is another area where the wideness in the of the characters in the PC Engine version really comes into play and limits your range of motion. If you look, there's a lot less space you can move around to the left of the boss here, in the PC Engine port than there is in the arcade original. It actually makes this fight, I would say, a bit tougher in the home port than it is in the arcade version. Still, either way, it's not so bad. Taking him down on PC Engine, and there he is, taken down in the arcade original. And we've only got one level left, folks. This is it. So as you can see, even the intro to this level is a little tougher uh, than it has been in the past ones. And that door that we see that the bosses came out of, the shading is way better in the arcade version. You get a much better look at it there. And for the PC Engine, I've got to say, this is probably the most graphically disappointing level there is in the whole game. So. There's no type of parallax at all, no full parallax or anything. The detail on the background tiles is just not there. It's much more basic looking on PC Engine CD than it is in the arcade. You can see we have much more like different lines and different designs in the background tiles that are just completely absent in the PC Engine CD port. Here's a place that you can die very easily on if you're not careful.
And also on PC Engine here, I don't like what they've done with the foreground colors. I like the darker colors better than the arcade foreground myself. Maybe you'll have a different opinion. If you do, let me know in the comments. And again, with the faster scrolling at times, I had to pause the PC Engine version there to let the arcade one catch up. And then look at this. Look at this. In the PC Engine version, everything is so much thicker. Your little hidey hole that you can use in the arcade version to just do this is completely gone. So, look at me just go right up in the face of that first gun. If you position yourself so it angles down just a little bit, it won't hit you. And it's basically the only safe spot in this entire fight that I know of uh, in the home console port. And once you take it out, you basically want to take out all the guns, keep yourself safe. And then once all the guns are gone, like that, that's when you can position your options there, move your ship up a little bit so you don't get hit by the explosion, you know, exploding bullets that come out of each gate that you destroy, and now you're set until you actually blow up the eye. Or the core! I don't remember if this one is shoot the eye or shoot the core. And we're almost done with this one! And finally! So this is another part that makes this level kind of disappointing on PC Engine compared to the arcade. We have lots of moving sections of the background, and look how choppy they are on PC Engine. So in the arcade, they're probably using sprites for that. I didn't double check or anything. Well, on the PC Engine, I would expect they're just redrawing tiles to accomplish sort of the same thing, even though they couldn't do it as smoothly. So, I mean, it gets the job done. It's there, it's not missing the part, which is good news. Uh, but it definitely does not look anywhere near as good. Again, I would say that is more similar to the kind of things you would expect to see on NES. Alright, here's our big walking robotic spider. And once again, the lower resolution and much thicker pixels on the PC Engine port mean that we have less room to maneuver around this spider boss. And not only does it mean we have less room, there are parts of it that you can't do the same way on PC Engine as you can in the arcade because of that extra thickness. There are some things that push you too close to the edge of the screen, and where you have room to maneuver in the arcade, to get around it, especially on the left side, you can't do it in the PC Engine port. You've got to handle this boss a different way. Which is not the end of the world, but if we're talking about, you know, arcade accuracy in the port, it definitely loses a bit, you know, for that oversight. Really what they should have done was redraw the spider to make the proportions more similar to the arcade version. We're approaching the final quote-unquote boss that it's not much of a challenge. Really, making it this far was the hard part. So the background looks nice and all, but again, I have to wonder why they didn't do something to try and implement a little bit of parallax or faux parallax on this part. Seems like it would have been pretty ideal over here. And the color's a little bit different, it looks a little, sort of, I don't know, grimier, darker on PC Engine. So we just shoot all those little tendrils, and then it's just a matter of time while he blabs, and then explodes. And you can see the ending happens pretty much immediately in the arcade, while on PC Engine it stops to load a little bit. But otherwise it looks very similar. Uh, the explosion here, the colors don't fade in or out as nicely as they do in the arcade, but it still looks good. And during the credits, we have, you know, fewer stars on the screen, but other than that, they definitely were going for the arcade feel here. And again, you really get the, you know, impression of just how much wider everything is here looking at the font that they used. I mean, the letters are a lot wider. That Team Gradius 2 fills almost the whole screen on PC Engine, 
uh, while it's not even close in the arcade. But other than that, the ending pretty much mimics the arcade one exactly. But you will notice those names in the credits were not the same between the two versions. I was kind of surprised that I didn't see many repeat names. So there you have it. A look at the complete game of Gradius 2 in the arcade original form, and also on the PC Engine Super CD. So my final thoughts on this matter, for the third time I'll tell you this was the best contemporary console port of Gradius released before the year 2000. Sure, they were up against some sprite limitations and the lack of, you know, hardware parallax scrolling on the PC Engine, but they worked around it pretty well in a lot of cases. The only level that I was really disappointed in was that last level, where it seemed like they just kind of gave up and didn't try. I mean, it, it had so much less detail, they didn't even try to do any kind of parallax or anything. They just let that one go, and I was kind of sad to see that after the rest of the game looked so good. And again, really the thing that affected it the most, and was the biggest challenge though, was of course the other thing that I mentioned over and over in this video, and that is the difference in resolution between the arcade original and this PC Engine port. Because the pixels are wider and there's fewer of them on screen, there's a lot of places, as you saw, where you can't maneuver your ship around as well, or enemies are wider than they're supposed to be, and take up more screen real estate than they should. And all of that made it quite a bit tougher in some areas than it should have been. And it's too bad that Konami didn't account for that difference. They knew the resolution difference when they were going into it. They could have compensated and redrawn some graphics, but what can I tell you, they chose not to. So still a great game with some minor flaws that could have been addressed before it came out. But anyway, what do you think about seeing Gradius 2 on the PC Engine CD here? Had you seen this version before? Had you ever seen it directly compared to the arcade version? What are your thoughts after seeing them right next to each other? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Anyway, that'll do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. If you enjoyed the video, please toss it a like and share it online somewhere. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you'll never miss one of my videos. If you're so inclined, you can now support the work I do here either on Patreon or Ko-fi, and I did just enable uh, channel memberships here on YouTube, so you can also do that now. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later!